Hey everyone, my name's Jeff. Welcome back to Jones Works. I hope you guys all enjoyed your Thanksgiving. And now that we're into December, it's time for those last minute gift ideas. So I've got this idea for you. This is called a trivet or a heating pad. It can be used as a serving tray or a cutter, cutting board also. Uh, very easy to make and very cheap. This is just uh, cherry that I use. You can use any type of wood that you want. And these are uh, cutting board tiles I got from the dollar store that have a lot of different designs. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Now let's get to the project. All right, so to get started, we're just breaking down our lumber. I decided to use cherry, but you can use whatever you want. I just had this on hand. I think this is a pretty easy project and you could probably figure it out just by the thumbnail of the video. Uh, we are making 12 of these things and I thought the video would be beneficial just to see uh, how you can make efficient use of your time using jigs and things like that for batching things out. Because this is one of those things that you could make a ton of and give as gifts or even to sell on the side. You could do whatever you want with these. So this is the style of trivet that we're gonna make. This one is my parents and they've had it for a long time and we like it because it's got these handles on the side making it easy to carry hot dishes to the table or wherever you're going. Now for the tile, I picked up these tiles from the dollar store that have different designs on them and I, I think they'll look really nice. For the wood, I have a bunch of cherry that has just been sitting up there so we're gonna use that up for this project. I've already cut the long pieces and now we're gonna move on to cutting the short pieces. All right, so for the short pieces, there are actually two different sizes we need to cut. There are two thicker ones that will be the same thickness as the long pieces. These uh, two short pieces and the long pieces will surround the tile. And then there are two smaller, thinner pieces on the outside that are for the handles. Now it'll be impossible to get a router in to make the round over after the glue up. So before that, we're gonna put our router in a vise and make that round over before the glue up. Now we're gonna make a quick jig. Uh, this is just scrap MDF and some strips of plywood that I'm gonna make the spacers out of. What we're gonna do is form an L and glue them out down with CA glue and then we'll be able to push the pieces in uh, into the corner so we'll know they're square and then using spacers for the cross pieces, uh, it's just gonna make it a whole lot quicker. Now the trick to this jig is that we're gonna need to leave some spaces for clamps. So the places we're gonna want to clamp up are where these cross pieces are. So I've glued this piece down. This is gonna butt up against that. I know this is already 90 degrees, so I'm just gonna use it to set this up. Now we're going to place a couple of smaller blocks on the ends. and then one in the middle. Now when I lift this up, I've got these spaces on the long side where I can clamp. Now using uh, spacer blocks and the jig, we'll get a consistent glue up for each of these. I'm using half inch blocks on the ends, uh, inch and a quarter inch blocks for the handholds and then a seven inch square for the tile in the center. Later on in the video you'll actually see I kind of made a mistake here. No big deal because I had a different uh, design plan in mind so I ended up changing that. Learn from my mistake though I'll show you that here shortly. Now I'm marking out where I'm gonna drill holes for the dowels. I'm gonna use dowels on this project so I don't have to use any fasteners. Uh, this is going to greatly increase the strength of the joint because we're actually just gluing up end grain and that, that makes for a pretty weak joint. The type of dowels I'm using are called Miller dowels. I'll show them here in a second. These are stepped dowels and they have 
uh, little ribs for extra glue service and they, they just make for a really strong joint. They're also pretty nice looking as opposed to those fluted dowels you get at the hardware store. Uh, I think I got these off of Amazon, so highly recommended. After drilling all the holes, we're just gluing and hammering in these dowels. I like to make the flush trimming nice and quick with the oscillating tool here. Just zip some off real quick. Next, we're going to use just a really small roundover bit. This is an eighth inch roundover bit and round over all the edges. I think this softens it up and makes it look really finished. And as you can see, uh, this is where, why we rounded over those uh, thin pieces earlier. The router just wouldn't be able to get in there. After that, finish it off with some hand sanding. All right, so I've decided on a little design change uh, for the tiles in the center I was going to glue in some cleats around the outside uh, but I didn't like the one that I made up so I changed it and I decided to glue in these plywood squares uh, which I stained black and I ended up liking that a whole lot better so they're going to end up looking like this and then the tile glued on top of that now I realize it would have been a whole lot easier to glue this in while I was gluing them in the jig fixture, but I didn't think about it back then, so we're just gonna work with worth work with what we have now. So I'm just throwing down this sacrificial one so I can glue in the tile at the correct height, let it dry, and then we'll throw the finish on and glue the tiles in at the end. Definitely would have been easier to do this earlier, but no big deal. Uh, no for next time. If I had glued these in before, there would be a lot less glue to clean up now, but no big deal. Wet rag cleans it right up. Now I had to hurry to get a lot of these in the mail, so I didn't show all of the finishing, but this is just the final pass that I'm making here. I'm just using a water-based spray lacquer and now finally uh, gluing on the tiles. I'm just using a uh, non-foaming uh, glue that sticks to both wood and glass. And to weight it down, I'm just using a cup of water. And that is gonna wrap it up for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. These are super fun and easy to make, especially if you learn from my mistakes and glue them up in the correct order. Uh, as you saw, I batched out 12 of these pretty quickly. I've only got a few left, but I needed to get some of them in the mail and on their way. So uh, I really love how these turned out and I hope the people who end up with them love them as much as I do. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next project.